Warning. This podcast may contain spoilers for whatever TV show or movie is mentioned. Please listen at your own discretion. Welcome to viewers and others. Oh, there we go. Can you hear me? Yeah. I think he froze. I think he froze. Let me see. Uh, there we go. What's going on? I am Scoots Bronson. And I am S. Foster. And this is Viewers Anonymous, man. How we feeling today, man? Um, man, feeling good, man. You know what I'm saying? We had a, a slight little technical difficulty, but um, we back up and running. Uh, I'm feeling good, though, man. Uh, I finally uh, went to the doctor and everything, got checked out. I had an x-ray, um, and it was, a, it was a mild strain. So right now I'm looped up a little bit on, you know what I'm saying, on them painkillers. And um, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I'm feeling feeling good. <laughs> I'm, <feeling amazing. laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you, brother. Oh, How man. about you, man? Oh man, I'm good. Man, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Just uh, we're glad to hear that good news that it was just a strain. Uh, for yeah, number one, man. but appreciate it. You know, uh, we're just just ready to you know anxious to get back in the lab. Um, I feel like this is gonna be um a really good one, man. I think this is one of those ones that. Definitely, man. Just just by looking at some information that I was just looking at just now, it's definitely something that's under the radar. So I, I think that you know we could, we could bring some bring some stuff to light with this episode, man. So I'm I'm really yeah. excited to do that, man, because I like to give people those gems. You know, what I'm saying those ones that you know really flew under the radar. Like I'm like what I like about doing this podcast with you is like we able like we both in agreements on like yeah we'll do the big movies but then it's also some of those movies that didn't really do that well as far as like you know gross and you know the budget wasn't as big and all this type yeah. stuff to be yeah. able to shine the light on some people i think that this is going to be uh i think it's going to be a dope episode man a dope deep episode yeah yeah, I think so too, man. Um, especially with the with the content of the movie that we're talking about, it's it's one of those ones you gotta, you know, um, a lot of us can relate to it, especially people that come from where we come from. So, you know, what I'm saying we don't gotta get super deep. You know, what I'm saying I think we're gonna get a few laughs in there too, though. But oh, yeah, yeah. It's gonna, we gonna it's just gonna be a good, real, you know, what I'm saying a real conversation. That's that's what I think it's gonna be, man. But for everybody who's um who's wondering what we're talking about, you know, what I'm saying if you listen to the uh. To the last episode, man, you know what I'm saying? When we was talking about the uh, trailer, you know, and of course, you know what I'm saying? You probably got a nice little hint from what we gave y'all. But uh, if you don't know, man, we're talking about, you know what I'm saying? South Central, man, 1992, um, movie by Oliver Stone, you know what I'm saying? It talks about, um, you know what I'm saying, up and coming situations with, you know what I'm saying, gangs, you know what I'm saying, urban life, um, low income situations. Dad's going to prison, um, all kind of different situations, man. That would go on in what we would call "quote unquote" the hood, and uh, you know, what I'm saying this movie really, you know, what I'm saying it really touched a lot of different things that was going on in the in the uh, black community, you know, what I'm saying around this time. So this is uh, this is something that for me at least I seen. Probably it definitely wasn't 1992, but I probably seen it around like 96, 97, and this is one of those movies that like when you seen it, you kind of you know what I'm saying like you kind of felt it, you kind of understood you know what I'm saying what was going on, you kind of got the gist of you know what I'm saying the, the shit that was happening in the movie because at the end of the day like you know what I'm saying this wasn't something that was you know what I'm saying different from anything else like everybody could have you know what i'm saying been a part of this anybody could have been in this situation 
Um, it was, of course, based on, you know what I'm saying, two guys that was from South Central L.A. or Los Angeles and California um, during probably what would probably be the height of gang culture. You know what I'm saying? Probably the most important time in gang culture. Um, I don't know what it was about the 90s, man, especially like the early to mid-90s, but it was like everything was at its peak. And it just seemed like, you know what I'm saying, with gang culture, like it was really at its peak. You know what I'm saying? Like the Crips, Bloods, GDs, Vice Lords, Latin Kings. Um, man, it's, it, it was it was other gangs around, you know what I'm saying? Like, and everybody had their own little subdivisions, but those was the ones you had. Like, I remember we used to go around the school and twist our fingers up and spell blood with our fingers or, you know what I'm saying? There was other people throwing up seeds. And, like, it was just all kind of different stuff. And we wasn't, in, in my job, I'm in Dayton, Ohio. I ain't even from L.A. I ain't, I, at this point, I ain't never been to L.A. So I don't know. I ain't never seen a real blood member, a real crip member. Like, you know what I'm saying? I grew up around dudes who was doing it. So, and then, and like, not really grew up around them, but I was around them as I was growing up. Let me specify that, because I don't want to make it seem like I was out there, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, mm-hmm. so I had a prince put it in in uh, his last album. He said, I'm not a street nigga. I'm just a nigga in the streets. That's basically, that was basically me. Like, I wasn't no, I was never no street dude, but you know what I'm saying? I just so happened to, you know what I'm saying, be around people who was. So I just so happened to be in the streets. And, and I was basically, um, you know what I'm saying, like kind of exposed to a, a lot of the different stuff. Like, I remember throwing up the Vice Lord Star or GD Star, whichever one it was. But I remember they had the star where you used to twist your fingers up and hold it up. Like, I used to do that shit. Like, I used to know all kind of gang shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? I remember it was a a, a rumor in, in one of the neighborhoods I lived in. Like, you couldn't wear red in, in a certain area or they'd jump you. Like, so it was like we were seeing this shit on TV and then we start imitating this shit here because we didn't really know. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, re- we didn't really understand it. But, you know what I'm saying, as you get older, you start to realize, like, a lot of this shit is stupid because a lot of this mm-hmm. shit was, was turned into something that it was never supposed to be in the first place. But that's something we can get into later. But you realize just how stupid it is, you know what I'm saying? Like, for people to go into a game, they got to listen to somebody tell them what to do. And, like, this is a whole bunch of shit. Like, you know what I mean? It's just... It's a weird life. To me, it's just a weird lifestyle to have. But this movie kind of showed you how weird that lifestyle was. You know what I'm saying? Especially as you get older, it's like, if you think about it, like, you're a grown man who paid bills. Like, imagine another man telling you, like, you got to go out and you got to go do this robbery. Like, you'll be like, man, get the fuck off my goddamn horse with that bullshit, man. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But how, how was it for you, though? Um, For me, it, it was, like... To piggyback off what you were saying about the 90s, like I think what a lot of people need to realize about the 90s was like there was this this door that had opened for black cinema. Yeah. Because if you notice, like when you when you look at the early 90s, you know, you had this movie, you had South Central, you had Minister Society, you had Boys in the Hood. Um, you know, like a lot of these movies, juice. Like all this stuff came out around the same, like like within like five years of each other. Yeah. And it was like like this door had opened, like this black door opened, and they was like, All right, y'all make all the type of movies y'all want to make at this time. So they actually started giving these movies budgets. Like this movie had a four million dollar budget. The problem was they only gross one point three, like worldwide. Like, so it didn't it didn't do anything. Like they they wasted you know what I'm saying, basically almost $3 million on this movie. So, now, the importance of this movie is more important. Now, even even like, even a guy like Glenn Plummer, like, he's the main character in this movie. Now, he makes a bunch of guest appearances in movies. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He was like the, uh, what we were talking about last episode with Dwayne Martin. Like, He's like the he was like the Dwayne Martin like he showed up in um, Speed for a minute you know what I'm saying yeah. he was he was, uh, he was the uh, the dude that had that uh, I think it was a Jaguar and then like he was in um, he was in um, uh, the day after tomorrow he was the homeless man with the dog yeah. you know what I'm saying like he just he just made like all these bunch of you know in uh, 
Menace of Society. You know what I'm saying? He was outside with the uh with the kid Kane. Yep. And he was and he was the one that was locked up in prison. So he always had like these small little appearances, and like this was the one movie that he really got to show his skill. And um, I just wanted to mention that to piggyback off that thought that you were saying about the early '90s. But for me, um, I think what I took out of it was obviously like I knew. I mean, I was around street dudes as well. Um, but you know, by watching movies like this, this showed me just how. I guess how heartless people could be like when it came to the street life because Ray Ray made it seem like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, we here to put our stamp on the things, you know what I'm saying? We, we taking over this, that, this, that. And then it was like, at the end of the day, like he, he really set his mans up and then he started using, and then he started using his kid you know what I'm saying? Why he was locked up, and it was just like, I thought y'all was cool though. You know what yeah. I mean? And it, like, it shows you like, you know, I've seen by you know personal experience, but it's not being me, but somebody close to me was somebody supposed to be your boy, supposed to be your dog. Y'all riding together? Because my thing when it comes to snitching, right? Yeah. I don't think I don't think it's. I think the only time it's snitching is when both of you are doing dirt. Like when both of you people are doing dirt, that's like, all right, you don't snitch on your man because it's like, yo, we both knew what we was getting into when we started doing this. Right. But if it's like a situation where I'm oblivious to the fact and I don't know nothing, and I'm well, not that I don't know nothing, but I'm not doing anything to contribute to what you're doing. It's like, nah, fuck that shit. I ain't got nothing to do with it. So I'm telling yo, you did this. So yeah, with with Ray Ray. Doing what he did, and then when when my one man get locked up, and he's telling, you know, he's telling him like, yo, he's he's basically taking all the money, and he's pretty much keeping it for himself. Like, like Loco, like when Loco got locked up, you know, he's telling Bobby, you know, what's going on on the outside, and Bobby's like, this ain't the, you know, this ain't the shit that me and Ray Ray talked about, and yeah. it's. And to then find out that, you know, Ray Ray is out there using his kids and he's using kids to, you know what I'm saying, to break into people's cars and steal stereos. And it's like, you, so you're selling drugs to the hood, but then you're also taking the kids from the hood and you're damaging them as well. And you, like, it, 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 you see that cycle that, that keeps that shit going. And it's, it's really, it's really a sad thing to watch, but there's also a message in this movie, and there's two people, I won't mention them yet, but there's two people that was very, very, very important to this movie, and mm -hmm. I'm going to see if you feel the same way when, when we get to that point of the podcast. Okay. Um, man, <laughs> first off, you know what I'm saying, let's we can just, you know what I'm saying, real quick go over some of the characters. You mentioned Glenn Plummer, um, Byron Mins, who played Ray Ray. Um, trying to think. Uh, Vincent Dupree, who played Loco, who was – that nigga was – he wasn't Loco for real. He was fiend out, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, Louise <laughs> Shelby, who played Carol. Um let me see. Let me see who uh, was on here. I'm trying to think if I could find some, some notable names. Um, Reginald T. Dorsey. Now, this dude, he plays, um, he always ends up playing like a gangster in a couple movies, but he was Bastille in this movie, but he, he done played a, a gangster in a couple movies. If you've seen him, you'll definitely know him by face. Um, but it wasn't too many people for um, it wasn't too many people that's known in this movie, which is kind of weird. Carl Lumbly, um, he played the the Muslim character. Um, yeah, and, I, and see that's you know what I'm saying like it's not a real big, you know what I'm saying uh cast. It's not well, it's not a notable cast. Um, yeah, true. But Alex Stone is the director. You know what I'm saying, which is which is very interesting. Um, I, I see. Uh, makes... I see Stephen Anderson. Stephen Anderson. 
Yeah, it say Stephen Milburn Anderson was the uh was the director um and the writer. But Maybe they say the song was the producer. He could have been. He could have been. You know, it don't really mm. tell me who the Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. To... He's he's the executive producer. Executive okay, I guess I know he had something to do with it. But So he just um, basically put some money to it. Yeah, Michael Spielberg, I know that name. He's in there too. So I mean it's not like you know what I'm saying, it's, it's a lot of people that's known, but the story is um is, is super important. You know what I'm saying? You mentioned something that's been uh going around on the internet and on podcasts lately, um, about the whole snitching thing. You know what I'm saying? From what I've always understood about snitching is if you are an accomplice, if you are uh, a part of the of the situation, then if you tell that snitching, if you mm-hmm. just happen to see what's going on in the street, and you ain't got nothing to do with it. Then you ain't snitching. You know what I'm saying? You just a witness. You tell it. That's what you're supposed to do. You're, you yeah. know what I'm saying? You're a citizen. You know what I'm saying? As they say, you're a citizen. If you ain't got nothing to do with it, you just, you know what I'm saying? You're a regular citizen. You ain't got nothing else to do with it. You're a civilian. Go ahead and, you know, keep that to where it's at. But it's other people out there that, that have, that has that mindset that, you know, if you see something like, um, for instance, uh, camera, when he had got interviewed and they was asking him, well, if see if you seen somebody shoot your mom, would you tell? And he like, nah, I ain't a snitch. Well, it's like, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's just that mindset that you got to have, which I understood why he had that mindset because at the time of him thinking in that manner, basically he was, he was in the streets. So he lived by that code for real. So for somebody to be in the streets, you know what I'm saying? I get why they would live by that code. For me, can't say that. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to lie to you. I'm not going to sit there and, and sit there and be like, no, nah, I ain't going to snitch on them. I probably uh, try to kill them before I tell on them. But more than likely, I end up, you know what I'm saying, trying to do something to, to get them done in, man. But um, this movie was super important to me because of the gang aspect. Um, this was like one of the realest gang movies you'll probably ever see. You know what I'm saying? As far as the way that they do their signs, the way that they rep, um, the recruitment of younger children or, or the recruitment of young boys, um, you know what I'm saying? The, the family aspect of it, you know what I'm saying? The, um, the illusion of it, you know what I'm saying? As far as thinking that somebody got your back when they really don't, thinking that somebody going to hold you down when they, they really not going to do that. Um, and just the, the loyalty, the distrust, like it's, it's so many different things that go into the elements of this, but, um, basically it's about what's, what's the game called deuce trade or something like that. Um, and you know, we see, um, we see Ray Ray kind of take the role of Bobby's you know, or, or he take Bobby's role when Bobby got to go to jail, you know what I'm saying? And he basically trying to play Jimmy's dad, you know what I'm saying? Or he like, uh, he basically like Jimmy's uncle in this sense. And mm-hmm. he like the uncle that's, that's basically leading him down the road to destruction because he done recruited him to kind of, you know, go out and, you know what I'm saying, basically be the gangster that his dad was. And he basically sent him in the, in the same situation that he was sending his dad you know what I'm saying? Jimmy got shot stealing radios out of car with the, with the 12 gauge. Mm-hmm. Remember, he tried to hop the gate, got blasted yep. in the back with the 12 gauge. Like, you got to think about that. Like, that's a kid, man. You know what I'm saying? Even this is, dude, go ahead. Now, even with him being a kid, there's no way the actor was 10 years old. Like, probably they could have, like, yeah, <laughs> like, man, like, come probably on, man. Not. That dude. <laughs> They should have said 12, man. Like, come on. I mean, I mean, I get it, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, I understand. Like, I mean, think about it like this. It's like Zach Morrison and motherfuckers are trying to play teenagers at, at Bayside. And them niggas are old. <laughs> <laughs> them niggas are That's, old, bro. Yeah, but like, but dude, like, that, that kid had to be 13, 14 years old. And they say he's 10. Hey. And it's like. Hey, if 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 he can pull it off, if he can pull it off, let him pull it off. 
man. Like shit. Uh, that's so Raven. She played that shit when she was thirty something. <laughs> <laughs> she was going to high school at thirty something, bro. So I mean, you know, if they can get it off, let them get it off. You got to give them their credit for that. Man. All right, I just, I just, I, I was thinking about that when I was watching. I said I got a mission at the school flight, man. That dude, <laughs> like, because I'm thinking, because I'm, I know my, I know, I, I got some unusual situations because it's like my my oldest has always been like bigger than his age. Like he just turned 13, but he's been wearing size 14 to 16 for like a mm-hmm. year. You know what I'm saying? But then I got on the other hand, I got 11 year old who still can wear like some. Eight, you know what I'm saying? Ten, you know what I'm saying? Ten to twelve is still too big for him. And it's like, and I'm looking at him. Now he's not the most normal ten year old, eleven year old, but it's like I don't see him going out <laughs> stealing radios, hopping fences. Like he's like he's way too little to be doing that shit. So I don't okay, know. I, I just I just had to mention it. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you 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 might you might be way off on how old this nigga is for real. I think Hold you lowballed it. You lowballed it. So it says on IMDb that his name is Christian Coleman. So I'm assuming that this is the guy that played Jimmy because that's what it's saying uh, on IMDb. But it says that this nigga was born in 1977. And this came out in '92. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, bro. So this nigga was like 25, 15, 25. <laughs> like this nigga was old than the motherfucker. Oh man, look, I got to make sure I'm saying that right. I don't want to just throw no numbers out there. What I say? I said 15. Is that right? 77 and 92? Um, let me see. So, so, uh, so 82 will be 10. So, yeah, that's about right. But, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. It's just like they, they could have. Yeah, he, he was I, 15. They could have they at <laughs> least said that, you know, 12 years went by. Like, just change the yeah. number in the script. Like, come on, 10. I was like, it didn't hit me until I watched it the other day. I was like, they saying that he's 10 years old? I was like, yeah. okay, okay. All right, all right. And My bad. I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. It was, it was just like I was – because I just watched it this weekend because, like, I haven't yeah. seen it in a couple of years. And so mm-hmm. I just watched it, and I'm like, 10? Like, that, that dude is 10? I was like, I don't know, man. That's, that's... grown-ass 10 year old. <laughs> But, but uh, uh, my yeah, no, you good, you good. That was that was good stuff, man. Um, this movie was this movie was weird though, bro. Like Loco was going in and out of jail while this nigga Bobby Johnson was constantly locked up. So Loco was apparently getting all the word on the street and then getting locked up to tell OG Bobby Johnson. Um, Ray Ray, man, this nigga was like a. They tried to make this nigga out to be a fucking uh. Like a, a, a criminal mastermind, like this nigga got his boy <laughs> locked up. He got his boy locked up. He got his kid. Uh, he got his kid hustling for him. Then he got he got his dude's girl hooked on drugs. Like, bro, this nigga was this nigga was a beast out here in the streets, bro. And then you know what I'm saying. The rest of it is just the, the to me the ending was the was the wildest part, man. You know what I'm saying that it had to come down to that, you know. But it just go to show you, man, that when you live in that life, bro, it's, it's it's some shit that just it ain't it ain't worth it. Yeah, and like for him to set him up, cause like you know what I'm saying, OG Bobby Johnson got out of jail, and then it's like you know, so him and Ray Ray is having these conversations about how how they want to take over, cause they were saying that you know they only had like a hundred members at the time, and he was like, you know, by this time. We want to have thousands and all this type stuff. So there's this mm-hmm. other pimp drug dealer guy that he want Bobby Johnson to take out. So he takes him out. And then, like, my thing was, so Bobby take my man out. He said, we got to move. And then next thing you know, it's like he's getting interrogated. They got the potato. They got the gun. Like, 
How the fuck they get that shit? And then it's like, it like it <laughs> and then it and then it tells you like, yo, right, right. Like, but my thing was, why did he feel that him and Bobby couldn't do this? I think that he felt that Bobby wouldn't have been all in because he got this baby. Mm. So he's like, the only way to get rid of him and not kill him, and to get this one dude because we need this dude out the way because this mm. dude is cutting into. The, you know what I'm saying? The bread that we need to be making in this area. So he's like, well, I set Bobby up, get him out of here, knock out two birds with one stone, and mm-hmm. then get him locked up. And then it's like, that's supposed to be your man's, though. And it's man, like, and it shows you. business, man. Yeah, cutthroat business. And then Ray Ray ended up, and then that's another thing. He wanted all that bread for himself because, like, he got his soldiers making nothing. He's probably really only paying my one dude that's driving around for mm-hmm. him. And then, like, Ray Ray was really like like the biggest asshole. Like, yeah, when, when, like when you when you looked at like what his morals was. Now I know like in this game, you know what I'm saying you can't be soft and all this stuff. Yes, I get all of that, but at the same time, like there is still a certain way to do things and to get a quote unquote ten year old to go out and steal stereos for you. And like when my man blasted him. It's like he protecting his house. Like you can't be mad at him. Like he didn't know yeah, it was a kid. But come on, man. Like okay, come but this on, is the man. thing though. My nigga, listen, my nigga was at the gate. He was about to hop the gate and it'd have been over with. He could have just left it alone. He could have shot one in the air. He didn't have to shoot the kid in the back, man. And I you don't think he knew. Real quick, real quick. I thought that that nigga was Reginald Bell Johnson. When I first seen that fucking movie, I thought that that was um uh what's his name uh from um uh, what's his name on the show? Uh, how I know his real name and not the name of the character from Family Matters. The cop. Oh, 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 Carl. Uh, uh, Carl. Yeah. yeah, Carl Winslow. I thought that was I thought that was him. His real name is Reginald Vell Johnson, but I thought that was. Carl Winslow when I first seen the movie. I was about to be like, damn, Carl Winslow really can't see <laughs> <laughs> But no, that's, that's, that's all I had, though. But no, but I, nah, didn't, nah. I didn't think he, it was necessary to shoot him, man. I mean, like, I think that, you know, it was dark. He didn't really get to see. And then, like, by the time he really even shot and pointed, like, he was jumping the fence. So it really, it really was hard to see that it was a child. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, it's a stereo. I mean, yeah, he could have shot in the air, but like at the same Dang. time, it's like living in the neighborhood that they was living in. It's like, I, I think that also was a point of like, you know, what I'm saying, don't nobody else come in here, like, because the word is gonna spread. You know, what I'm saying that mm-hmm. you know, somebody got shot, this dude got shot by trying to steal this dude radio, so we know not to really fuck with this dude, you know, saying so not well, to go see, steal anything. Okay, so I see what you said, right? But I also see it in this manner. I think that, or I don't know what I think, but it could have also went, like, he could have shot dude, and then they got word that he shot dude, and then they retaliate. Now, they come back and just light this nigga house up. Because, True. you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot, of these, a lot of these niggas, like, that's what they be on. Like, nigga, you kill one of ours, Okay, we about to torture this shit. Like you killed that boy over a radio. It wasn't necessarily that that serious. I understand he was yeah. stealing your property, and I get that. That's if you defend your property, you defend your property. But the way I looked at it, and maybe maybe I'm just you know what I'm saying. Of course, we ain't in the situation, and it's strictly hypothetical. But the way I look at it is is that he's stealing out your car. He not actually in your home threatening you. So for you to even like have a shotgun out to begin with is is crazy, you know what I'm saying? Like like I said, to me, I I feel like if he step outside, power one in the air, he clearing all that out. True. Now I'm not defending my man for shooting him. Yeah. I'm just saying, like you know, you when you look at the type of neighborhood that he stayed in, and like there's a whole bunch of different scenarios. Like for one, end up being a child. You know, another one, it could have been like your scenario. It could have been somebody that was part of a gang. Mm-hmm. Or it could have just been a crackhead. You know what I'm saying? Just trying to True. steal your stereo, to turn it into a pawn shop. So there's a whole bunch of different scenarios. And it's like, do you want to take that risk of like being the person who 
know what I'm saying? Who shot somebody? <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, quick story. Talk about quick story. So, um, <laughs> I think this was probably around 2013 or 2014. Um, me and my wife had just moved into this house um, on the east side of Dayton, Ohio, right? And mm-hmm. one day, you know what I'm saying, we, we all sitting outside – we chilling, you know what I'm saying? We uh, well, no, we was in the house. I'm sorry, we was in the house chilling, having a good time. We was watching movies. It was just we both had a day off. Um, the kids was gone, you know what I'm saying? And we was out. We was both just relaxing. And so, um, I forgot what we did the night before, but you know what I'm saying? We came home. Everything was cool. And uh, she asked me to go get something. I forgot what it was, but she asked me to go get something out the car. And so, you know what I'm saying, I grab the keys, um, go to the car, unlock it, you know what I'm saying, I'm looking, and I'm looking through, you know what I'm saying, the glove compartment, looking through the uh, the armrest, and, like, right out the corner of my eye, I just happened to, like, look to the left, and the stereo was gone. <laughs> <laughs> This is a true story. This is a true story. They stole her stereo. So <laughs> I'm tripping. But I start laughing. Cause I'm like, bro, it's 2000, it's 2014. Like, who who still steals the radio? Like nobody is like you don't need to steal like who who out here is looking for a radio hot off the street? And I, I wouldn't I wouldn't know who this person is personally. I need to know because sir, you you are fucking the game up. And so uh I go in the house and I'm like, yo, like um <laughs> it was even funny even saying it. I was like, yo, uh somebody stole the radio. She was like, What? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I was like, somebody stole the radio out the car. She was like, are you fucking serious? <laughs> I was like, yeah. But they left the change, and it was like change in there. They left the change, they just stole the radio. So I was like, who the, I was just confused, like, damn, who the fuck is stealing radios? And so we leave, you know what I'm saying, they, they kind of fucked up the dash or whatever, but it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. But they took the radio out, then... Next thing you know, you know what I'm saying, she went to her dad's because he had a mechanic, and he put a whole new radio in there. Everything was good. Brand new radio. Well, it wasn't brand new, but you know what I'm saying? It was a new radio for the car. And then, like, I think, like, six months to another year later, they stole that one, too. <laughs> so, it's people who are still out here stealing radios, bro. This is not, this is no bullshit. I don't understand what they need them for. You know what I'm saying? Like in 2014, like we had ox cords and shit. So, like, it wasn't necessarily, you know what I'm saying? Like having to, well, we well, the the radio we had was Bluetooth, so we didn't need the ox cord really. We just Bluetoothed into the radio, and then, you know what I'm saying? Like the the uh the first one was the ox cord. The the new one that they had was Bluetooth. So I don't know, man. It was just it was weird. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking through the car, but I just happened to look to the left and the radio going. I was just like, wow, boy, they still still on radios in 2014. So as soon as I Ooh. seen that, the first thing I thought of was Tyrone Biggins. He was like, <laughs> 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 they was doing the, uh, they did the Red Balls commercial. And then she was like, oh my God, somebody broke into my car. And then he came back, popped up out of nowhere, was like, you know, People still do still radios, you know, and that's the first thing that popped up. I, just I was like, "Damn, they really still the radios out here." That's crazy. Oh man! Yeah, but, but you know yeah, what? Like, even 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 in that movie, I didn't understand. It's like, okay, so you you selling drugs? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So you are supposed to be like the big drug dealer in town, but you but you get kids to steal radios for you, and you giving them twenty dollars. It's like, see, that's the I'm a, that's the. That's the that's the shadow move, man. That's the that's to keep the the heat up off you. Like it was just it was just strange, but for him to, I I, I just didn't like the way Ray Ray moved. Like, yeah, I agree. It, in any other stuff, like, I understood. Like yeah, like you grew it, but the way you grew it, you didn't grow it in a in a in an authentic way. Like you, 
like he just did it terrible. But to get off mm-hmm. Ray Ray, because I don't want to put that much time into you know what I'm saying him. The two most important people in this movie to me is Ali and Nurse Shirley. Well, Shelly. Because I don't think what happened at the end wouldn't have happened without those two when we're talking yeah. about both of them as individuals. Because right. after Jimmy got shot, you know, he went to the hospital and he was basically in the hospital with uh with Nurse Shelley. And like mm-hmm. she took a liking in him. You know, I think yeah. that she noticed like I think what, what really made her care as much as she did was when Carol went to go see him and she was like, well, he can't talk right now, you know, um, but, you know, you can sit with him. And she was like, nah, I'll come back with you, you know, when he can talk. And she was like, you don't want to sit, like, this is your child and you don't want to sit with him? And she was like, yeah. what good is it going to do to me if he can't talk? And she was like, oh, he ain't nothing, he ain't going to be nothing. He's going to be just like his daddy and his granddaddy. He's going to be in jail. And I think that you know, nurse, the nurse looked at him like, this kid is a lost soul. He don't have anybody. So she kind of started treating him, you know, like a son, you know, getting yeah. him in the ping pong and, and all this type of stuff. And he was a totally different person in that, like, he tried to do the little hard thing, but then, mm-hmm. like, he kind of softened up a little bit, and then he told her that he was going to miss her when he left. And then mm-hmm. he t- went to the home, and then these dudes stood up, and then he did the do sign, and then they sit down, and then he go back to doing that dumbass walk that he would do. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> that walk, dude, killed me in that haircut, dude. It was like he yeah. had the official bowl cut, <laughs> and then <laughs> and then he had this walk, man. It was terrible. It was terrible. But I thought that her he gave her, the walk. That, man, I ain't even giving him. I, I can't give him the satisfaction of calling that against the walk, man. That was a your leg broke walk. I don't know what that was. Yeah, and. I think that that little bitty time that he had with her, you know, while his back was recovering, I thought mm-hmm. that that was very, very important in his life. And I mm-hmm. think that that was, you know, that cross that crossroad moment. And I think that he he knew as a quote unquote 10 year old that when he <laughs> went to that home, he had to revert back to what it was because this was a way to interact with these type of dudes out, you know, in the hood or whatnot. So I thought yeah. that that was very important to his transformation for that to even happen towards the end. And then when it goes yeah. to, you know what I'm saying? OG Bobby Johnson, you know, with, with him being in jail and he finding out through loco, what Ray Ray is doing on the outside, you know, he's dealing with the, you know, the, the, the inside, Type stuff he had to deal with because he's seen the the uh, the Aryan guys picking on Loco, yep. so he's like, "Yo, I'm bringing Loco in." They're like, "Yo, well, you gotta, you know, what I'm saying you got a price to pay for doing that." So then he owed the Aryans money, but then he realized that the Deuce ain't as you know what I'm saying as good as they claim to be. So now he's right. like, "I'm a, I want to be out the Deuce, and ain't nobody left but the Muslim dude." And so mm-hmm. then Ali steps in. And then, like, one of the most powerful things in this movie was Ali telling the story of why he's locked up. Yeah. You know, about how he killed the kid that killed his kid. Mm -hmm. So now he's in jail for life. So, like, that was, like, the most powerful thing. And he's telling him, like, yo, you need to get out of here and you need to, you know, make a promise to me that you're going to take care of your child. And I think that those two people were the most important people in this movie. So do you agree with me on that? Oh, 100 percent. And and uh that's a great co- comparison that you actually made. But I think um one thing that you missed was that if you really think about it, uh they were they were the same character. You know what I'm saying? For um for Bobby Johnson, it was Ali, and like you said, and for um and for uh for Jimmy, you know what I'm saying, it was the nurse. And so if you if you really look at it without the nurse, what happens at the end, like you said, Jimmy Jimmy probably would have shot Bobby at the end if the nurse wasn't there and, and making sure, you know what I'm saying, she played that small role of a mother figure for the time that she did because I think that what, you know what I'm saying, like a, a lot of what happens in this movie 
that's traumatic, especially for a young boy. You know what I'm saying? Like for him to have to go through that, for him to lose his dad at a young age, you know what I'm saying, to, to jail for the time that he did. And then, you know what I'm saying, his mom, you know what I'm saying, on and out drugs, not really giving a fuck about him, can't really, you know what I'm saying, pay for him, can't really put food on the table and everything else. You know, he he had no choice but to, you know, go out and do what he did for real, for real, because, I mean, that was his only way of survival. You know what I'm saying? He he wasn't going to be able to, to do school or any of that. So for for her to come in and, and actually play the role of a real mother, to show him care and love and make sure, you know what I'm saying, she basically helped him start walking again and helping, you know, something like you were saying, teaching him how to play ping pong and everything else, that showed him something other than what he was used to. And that, that probably opened up, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying, a wormhole of creativity for this kid. You know what I'm saying? We don't know what this really did for him as far as mentally, you know what I'm saying, on the positive side because, you know what I'm saying, it's, this is his first time even getting this feeling for real. And then, you know what I'm saying, when his dad comes back, luckily, you know what I'm saying, he get, he had to run in with Ali and, you know what I'm saying, he was basically cleaning himself up. That way when he get out there, you know, and he see Jimmy, you know, he can kind of tell Jimmy, you know, this is what's good for you. This, you know, what I'm saying I don't want you to have to go through what I went through. You know, I heard what was going on out here, and I mean, he basically cleaned himself up. He basically changed his life around. And I mean, like I said, I, I agree with you one hundred percent, bro. That was a, a great comparison. Like to me, those two characters really did change the whole, you know, what I'm saying story of, of the movie. Oh yeah, for sure, man. Because I I feel like when. So the whole traumatic scene of when Ray, not Ray Ray, but when Jimmy left the boys home, mm-hmm. he had to go around and he had to find them. So, you know what I'm saying? He ran up on his own, the, the little kid crew that I always sat at the same spot. Yep. So he went to them and he had to, you know, he knew how to, to play the little kids. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He told them like, "Yo, I'm OG Bobby Johnson." You know what I'm saying? I'm looking, I'm looking for little, you know what I'm saying? Little, you know, little uh, Jimmy, all this type of stuff. So they told him where he was. So he goes down and and he's talking to Ray Ray, and Ray Ray trying to play the cool thing, like like I ain't set you up ten years ago. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Lou, look what we built. Look what we built. We're like, what you mean we? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you built this shit because you decided to get me locked up. So yeah, he's trying to, to play, the bird, yeah, like he's trying to play the Wii game, you know what I'm saying, when we face to face. And so he goes in, and so Ray Ray get my man to get the drop on him, you know what I'm saying? So he falls down, and then Ray Ray goes, and he gets the man that shot, you know what I'm saying, Jimmy. So mm-hmm. now Jimmy is in front of the dude that shot him in the back, that ruined his back. So Ray Ray's telling him in his ear, like, yo, this is the man who shot you, you know, you want to shoot him. And I thought that with Bobby Johnson, the 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 line of saying, if you steal goods from a man, you know, in time you can return those goods. Mm-hmm. He was like, if you, you know, if you do this to a man, you know what I'm saying, you can in time you can go back and you can do it. And he was like, yeah. but if you kill this man. You know, he's gone forever and you can't redo it and you can't go back. You got to live with it forever. So and I think that telling this to, you know, a young kid in front of somebody like Ray Ray and like Ray Ray, like it like that wasn't really the thing that got him. Like Ray Ray is still on his shit. Like I don't give a fuck. I don't care nothing about all that. But Mm -hmm. I think what what really got, you know, Ray Ray to really change was the fact of he was like. I came here for my son and I told a man in jail that I was going to, you know, put my life on the line to save my son. He was like, and I'm ready to die today. And he was like, and all I want to do is be what me and you didn't have. Ray Ray, neither one of us had our father. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I'm just trying to be a father to save, you know, my son. And I think that that was the line that, like, even though Ray Ray was a grown man, he's hard, he gangsta and all this stuff, there still is a boy that's missing. Like, he never had a father. He never had a man to really teach him how to be a man. So, and I think that he saw that 
that he had that vulnerable moment where he's like, damn, he right. I didn't, yeah. Me and him, we didn't grow up without no father. Now he got this kid and he want to be a father to this kid. And then he also threw in his face like, you told me at the door that you owe me. This yeah. is what I want. All I yeah. want is my son. You can keep all that money that you profited, all that money that you say you were going to split to me. You can keep all that. All I want is my son. And mm -hmm. I thought that that was really the message of the movie. Forget all the stealing of the radios. Forget all the selling of the drugs. Forget all of the gang signs. I think that this was the message of the movie. And then also when he was getting ready to walk out with his son, because he told him, like, look, we're going to do this the right way. You're going to have to go back to the home, and I'm going to do the best I can to get you out of there. And then, like, when they're walking out, he looked at Ray Ray, he looked at the man, and he's like, man, just let that man go. Like, yeah, he shot my son, but we're going to let all yeah. that go. I think that is, like, the premise of the movie right there is that scene. Yeah, I mean, it's, like I said, man, you, you got to realize, like, this – this is basically now now first and foremost this is a movie so let's let's keep that in mind but you know what I'm saying like this is the 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 best outcome possible um for somebody leaving the game you know what I'm saying like this is mm -hmm. something that in real life it probably would have never even went down this way you know what mm -hmm. I mean but I think that what this showed people was that even though, you know what I'm saying, you you went through certain circumstances, you went through, you know what I'm saying, those traumatic experiences, you can still overcome, you know, anything, any of those obstacles that's in your way. You know what I'm saying? As long as you are willing to make a change, that change can be made. And, and this is, like you said, that was the perfect example. The fact that he even turned around and told him, like, hey, man, let that man go. You know what I'm saying? I don't got no beef with the man. My son, you know what I'm saying? He obviously don't got no beef with the man. It was a mistake. You know what I'm saying? It could have been a costly mistake, but it wasn't. So, you know what I'm saying? Let it go. Like you said, he, he said that, you know what I'm saying, something powerful. If you steal from a man, you can give it back. You know what I'm saying? If you, if you hurt this man in time, you know what I'm saying, his wounds are healed. But if you kill this man, ain't no coming back from that. So the fact that, you know, he was even willing to teach us, even though he was willing to try to teach his son something in that moment, that just lets you know, like, yo, that's that's something that's dope, man. And, you know, this this movie was, it, it kind of gave you the ins and out of gang life. It kind of gave you the ins and out of, you know what I'm saying, Los Angeles at this time, especially with everything that was going on. Because, like, in 1992, you know, this is when Rodney King getting beat up. Um, you know what I'm saying? The doggy style album is coming out. Uh, you know what I'm saying? The 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 uh the OJ case is going on around, you know what I'm saying? No, not the OJ case, I'm tripping, I'm tripping, I'm tripping. Um Yeah, that's ninety-four. That's ninety-four, yeah. But it's like all this stuff is is happening, you know what I'm saying? We got the riots, that's what I'm thinking of. The riots in LA is going on around this time. And so, you know what I'm saying, like for this movie to come out in that time. And show, you know what I'm saying, some sort of positivity out of that area. Because if you like you said, it was a lot of movies about LA in the in the early nineties. You know what I'm saying? That was that was sort that was starting to kind of be the hub for black movies. And it was I think it was important because a lot of it was showing positivity, a lot of it was showing people trying to get out, people trying to change their lives, people trying to make a better situation for themselves. And I think that that was, you know what I'm saying, people trying to, um, you know what I'm saying, program people's minds to start being more positive, man, and to stop all this gang violence. And then what was also important was, you know what I'm saying, I think, I believe this was 92, when they had the um, the gang truce, when the Crips uh, and the Bloods came together. It was around that time. It was around that time. Let me see. I, I'm going to look it up, though. Um Okay, why are you looking that up? Like, yeah, this is what you also got to realize. Like, even with this happening, like, like you said, it's the best scenario. But then at the same time, you still got to remember, like, this is still not no, like, perfect ending. Like, Jimmy right, got to right. go back to a home. 
We don't know how long Jimmy was in that home. We don't know how long it's it going to take Bobby Johnson to get a job. Okay. Yeah, like it, you don't know. Okay. And then you don't know how long it's going to take Jimmy to – not Jimmy, but uh, Bobby Johnson to actually get a job, to right. actually be right. able to get, you know, a viable place for this kid because they're not going to release – like the mm-hmm. state is not going to release this kid unless you got a job. You know, food on the table. You know, she so gotta have stuff in the refrigerator. So and this nigga, this nigga it, probably probably on probation and all that shit. Yeah, he's still on probation. So we don't know how long it is, but I think, but the but the message is the fact of I got my kid away from Ray Ray. Like, like right now, this is the win. So yeah. it's 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 one of those situations where it's it's not a happy ending, but then it's also you know, like you said, the best case scenario because both of them are still breathing. Because a lot yeah. of the time, the only way you can get out of a game is you're not breathing anymore. So yeah. that's also something else to consider when it comes to this move. Yeah, man. So, um, you ready for the fire flames, bro? Yes, sir, man. Let's get them in. Yoga fire. Yoga flame. Yes, sir, man. It's that fire flame time, man. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go first on this one. Um, if you don't mind. Um, oh yeah, it's on you. So, for me, man, like I said, it showed the the ins and outs of the gang life. This is probably to me probably the closest, the most realistic, um, the most realistic it was to gang life to. You know what I'm saying? The the father son dynamic, the the black family dynamic, um, especially in '92. You know what I'm saying? With everything going on, um, the cast was subpar, but everybody did a hell of a job. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't. It didn't really need any stars. I think that's what kind of added to that realness. You know what I'm saying? Because it wasn't like a super huge movie star in it. Um, and then you know. Not only that, man, it was, you know, it was those ups and downs. It was that drama. It was that, you know, those moments that kind of grabbed you at your heartstrings and made you, you know what I'm saying, kind of feel for, you know what I'm saying, Jimmy made you feel for Bobby Johnson because, um, you know, he was he was locked up when his son was going through, you know what I'm saying, everything that he was going through. So for me, man, I'm going to go ahead and give it a three and a five, I mean, three and a half. Okay, that's what's up. That's what. Uh, like for me, I, I want to say it's like a plus um, to be able to have the the acting that you got out of the you know the the sub part people. Like you said, there's not a lot of noticeable people in this. Mm-hmm. So, and I think that everybody did a really good job for what you know. What I'm saying what they put out there. Um, I think Glenn Plummer. Is one of those actors who I think every time I've seen him, like I mean, I've noticed him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he yeah. never really have a lot of a lot of you know major running role. time. Yeah, you know, major mm-hmm. roles. Like like this was really like his only really major role that I've ever seen. So, but even yeah. like when he was in Day After Tomorrow, I noticed him. Like even when he was in <laughs> Speed for a little hot second, like. He always finds a way to, you know, steal the screen. Um, with that being said, as far as the storyline and all of that type stuff, I, I do got to knock it a little bit for having a 15-year-old play a 10-year-old. Um, like, I, I'm, I'm stuck on that. But the message of the movie um, is great, and I'm going to give it – I'm going to give it the same, man. I'm going to give it a 3.5. Um not, not it's not taking anything away. I still feel that it's a hood classic. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah. there, there, there are some things that is wrong with this film to yeah. go along with the things that are good. So I'm gonna give it a three point five. Cool, man. Um, yeah, this, this is you know, what I'm saying it's definitely a classic. This was one of the ones that, uh, you know. When you look back, you know what I'm saying, you can you can always learn something from it. Um, the 
the re the replayability is uh kind of low on this one. I ain't gonna lie to you, for me at least. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm definitely not. I mean, like I it, <clears throat> if it's on, I won't skip past it. But it's not something I'm going to look for. So yeah, yeah. Um, I only watched it because we was doing it. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. That is fucking hilarious. <laughs> All right, so um, this next one that we got coming up, next episode, man, we paying homage to um, one of the greats. You know what I'm saying? This dude has given us timeless classics. Um, he's worked with some major people. Um, oh. He even he even gave us one of the movies that I would have never thought would have been able to last as long as it did, but somehow. We can never kill this movie off, and that shit even branched off into something different. So he was definitely a part of that, and um, I think that's super dope. Um, so, you know what I'm saying? Y'all stay tuned. Y'all make sure, um, you know, y'all tuned in for this one because I don't know, man. This one is this one is going to be very interesting. What do you think, man? I think I think it's gonna be very interesting, man, because like this dude always find a way to set it off. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Every time. Yeah. Um is he he's just he he's one of he's one of those dudes who I think that some people don't even really realize because I think he's one of those ones like he cause he's been in a couple of his movies and I don't think people even yeah. know who he is or what he looked like. He's like one yeah. of those type dudes. He's not like a like a like a Spike Lee. Like you would know, like yo, that's Spike Lee, right? I think he's one of those directors where people just like they don't really know who he is, but they probably seen almost. Uh, I mean, if they're movie people like me and you, they probably seen almost all of his movies and probably had no idea because some people don't watch those end credits and they really don't care who really directs the movie. So, yeah, yeah. man, it, like. Like he he he's one of those dudes that that is a whole legend out here, but he he could go into the grocery store and everything's all good, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, so, without hurting yeah. his back, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, yeah. But but like you said, he 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 set it off, but he also played uh played it, you know what I'm saying, very well, and he he know how to be cool. So um, that's that's one of the guys, man, who. Who just he just probably as fast and furious as the rest of them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, this this dude is amazing, bro. Like from from music videos to movies to I mean he, he probably done done it all, man. So yeah, listen, this this next episode is we gonna we gonna take you guys down memory lane. Um we're gonna mm-hmm. bring you back. Uh, and it's going to be a good one. So, you know what I'm saying? Y'all stay tuned. Like I said, make sure y'all watching the next episode. Um, but, you know what I'm saying? Y'all can follow me at uh, Scoots Bronson on on Twitter. Yep. Scoots Bronson uh, underscore TV on Instagram. Scoots Bronson TV on YouTube. Um, make sure, you know what I'm saying, you guys are going to Facebook and um, joining the VA Pod Watch Group. Please go to the VA Pod Watch Group. Hit that request button, jump in, make sure that you are, um, you know what I'm saying, hitting us up. Make sure you're jumping in there because, you know what I'm saying, we we got a lot of things that we got planned out and we're trying to do something. We just need that audience to build up. We need that audience to go stronger. So, y'all keep, you know what I'm saying, y'all keep on uh, showing us love, man. Y'all, y'all start inviting people if y'all got to, if y'all already in the group. That would be dope, too. Um and, you know what I'm saying, if you're on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you're just not watching it, uh, make sure you hit that like button. We definitely need you to hit that like button. The more likes we get, the more people can see this. Um, like I said, we go live every Tuesday and Friday when we record these. The audio the audio will be out either that night or the next day. So, you know what I'm saying, y'all make sure y'all hit us and, and get in early. Y'all can leave comments. We post the comments, all that good stuff. Y'all don't do nothing but help the show get better. So we need y'all to, you know what I'm saying, do as much as y'all can. Um, and, you know what I'm saying, keep supporting. We definitely appreciate it, man. Thank you. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, also, you can um, follow the Stolen Time Pod 
on Instagram, on uh, s.foster8 on Instagram and Twitter. Um, you can find the links to everything on those um, on all of those places. Also, the Stolen Time podcast on um, Facebook. And follow the Stolen Time podcast, man, on all major platforms. Um, you know, we just put out uh, man, what we did on that? We um, we put out episode 198, man, so we're getting close to 200, man, so yep. that's crazy. That's crazy, man. We're coming up on 200 episodes on the yeah, Stolen Time podcast. Yeah. Yes, oh, sir, man. man. And, and shout out to you, man, for that 28 minutes for lust with Candace, man. Dope episode. Y'all gave a lot of love to North Carolina on that bad boy, man. You know what I'm saying? Between J. Cole, between rap, especially rap. Y'all show rap the, the proper love. Oh, yeah. I love that. I love that. Y'all, y'all really did y'all thing on that, man. That was that was a good episode, bro. Oh yeah, for sure, man. Like like it was uh it was it was a long time coming, man, um, to uh to have Candace on the podcast. Uh I, I just didn't know if she was down for it, reached out. She was like yeah. she was cool with it. And uh so you know I was trying to figure out if I wanted to do stolen time or twenty eight, but I was like I knew it was gonna be surrounded around rap. So I was like this is more of that twenty eight minutes or less type of mm-hmm. you know type of podcast. So I tried to use like um I'm sure you heard it. Like I, I tried to use the not just the Ro- Joe Rogan, but I tried to use the Combat Jack. You know what I'm saying? Type of yeah format, yeah. man. To, you definitely, to get that you pie definitely in. pay homage. Yeah, you definitely oh, yeah. pay homage. All right, rest in rest in power, Combat Jack. You you definitely did a, uh did well, oh, man. You did a hell of an interview, bro. I, I just want to give you all flowers on that one. That that was great. You know, it was oh, it was man. funny because you was like you said you was like, oh man. He said I, I went through all this. I'm sorry, I forgot. I ain't even ask you. How did you do in the pandemic? <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, hey, listen, but you was you was on you was on such a roll, man, and y'all y'all had like y'all had just a great flow. It was like the when you asked it, it made it, it, it sound perfect the way you put it in there. So trust me, <laughs> man, that shit was great, bro. That shit was great. Oh uh, man. <laughs> Yo, I was dude, I was trying because it was so it's like when you I don't know if you cause see I don't do interviews. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like usually when yeah. I have people on, it'd be people that I communicate with. Like I don't communicate with Candace. Like she'll like comment like on the you know on the uh, on the stolen time pod and she'll be like, Oh, you know, I felt this way about this pod, nah 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 nah, all this type stuff, and then I'll write a comment yeah. and then it'd be the end of it. So like we never really communicate. Like I haven't like spoken to her since that show. Um, what was that? Was that 2018? I think yeah, 2018. Like wow. I haven't spoken to her, so it was just it was weird. So I'm like I'm gonna have to figure out like how I'm gonna do this and how I'm gonna carry this. And it was just like she made it so easy, and it was just mm-hmm. like so we started from. Cause I wanted to, you know, let people know like this is how I encountered this person, and like we just got so much into the interview that I didn't even think about it. It was just like, damn, I ain't even asked you about how you've been yeah, through was, the pandemic. Was, it was just like, like it came in, it came in real time, man. Dude, that 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 dude, it was it was wild, man. But I, I felt like I felt like it was a good pie. Uh, it was a lot yeah. of stuff shared there. And I love when you get those surprise things. Like I was still, I was still stuck on the fact of because, like you know, she's in Louisville, Kentucky. So mm-hmm. that's exactly where that shit happened with Breonna Taylor. And mm-hmm. like for her house, to, to people try to attempt to break into her house while she's there, and, and then, then while she's working, yeah, that's yeah, crazy, broke in her man. shit. Like that's that wild, crazy. dude. And like that's yeah. why I say, like when it comes to these podcasts, like people never know, like. Mm-hmm. Like, don't get me wrong. I love these celebrities that, that you know, these podcasts that I listen to. Like, they're good at mm-hmm. what they do. But, like, they don't have, like, those relatable stories like the rest of us. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, and I felt like there was a great story to be told. Just a everyday life, a person that just goes to work every day. And, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Because of how the police is treating the citizens of Louisville, Kentucky right now. Right. Like, nobody give a shit that her place is getting broken into. So, yeah, I thought crazy. I thought yeah, I thought I thought it was I thought it was a good interview, man. Like everybody please go out support the episode. Um mm-hmm. the episode thirty four to twenty eight minutes or less. Uh shout out to Candace. 
Um, appreciate her coming on to that podcast, man. So, you know, it, and then it's also good to hear like somebody else, you know, compliment your work. You know what I'm saying? When you put so yeah. much effort into these podcasts, like people think that we just get on here and we just fucking talk. And it's like, no, like we really put everything we got, you know, into these podcasts, like to put yeah. out, cause you never know what can be that podcast that pop. Yep. You know, like you never know. Like yeah, we, we got, never thought we got episodes planned up two months from now, so for sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, it's like, like I said, you never know which one it is. Like, we didn't know that Outcry was gonna be like our largest play fucking podcast. You know, yeah, still was, to this day. Crazy. So that's crazy. You know, I, I, yeah, yeah. So man, I, you know, I, I, I get in, and, and it just, it's great to, to hear somebody that you don't even really know you know, they ain't in your life like that to really, mm-hmm. like, support your podcast, you know, like that and that you know that you're in their rotation. Like, even when it comes to you, it's like, shit, like, I know Scoop's gonna listen to, you know what I'm saying, the shit I put out, you know, she's gonna listen to it, Casey's gonna listen to it, and I don't know who the rest of these people are, but, like, mm-hmm. people are listening to it, and it's just to hear, you know, somebody give you that props, you know, while you're here, give you that flowers while you're still here, like, you know, I, I really appreciate that. So, sure. I mean, hopefully, I mean, I got some other stuff lined up. See if I can get some of this stuff to work out. But you know, what I'm saying she turned out to be a really, really good guest. And then I did fuck up though, because my problem was like I didn't know what to like to be like, yo, like how long are you really trying to do this? So I was trying to be generous. I'm just sure you heard it. I tried to end the pod. Yeah, like midway through, yeah. But yeah. She, but, but you know what though? She she kept it G. She was like, you know what I'm saying? Hey, don't we can still go on. Don't she, worry about it. Cause got, she, cause she was like, yeah. cause she was like, oh, it was something I forgot to tell you. And then it's yeah. like they say you know, a whole another hour went by. And it hey, was like, that's, Damn. that's how you that's how you know, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? You got people who, you know what I'm saying, doing good stuff out here because for her to even be able to like cause she came back a couple times like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like she'd be saying it and then she'd click back real quick but she kept everything in context you know what I'm saying like y'all kept everything on track so it was yeah that was dope man that was dope yeah appreciate that we got we got to get her on here man Let's, oh yeah um, like i told her i sure told her that, that list. yeah yeah i got the list down so i hit her with the list to see what you know what yeah. i'm saying what she's interested in and you know hopefully she can jump on this pod and you know what i'm saying and, and you know cuz we like I say, like, you know, me and Casey was talking today because he, he texted me. He was telling me, like, how, you know, how well, you know, I was able to do this interview. And he was like, man, he was like, it flowed good, everything. He said, you know, he said that shit just flowed like a river, dude. He was like, the flow was good. The sound was good. Subject matter was good. Like, you know, yeah. we pretty much we pretty much found a way to, to, to make rap. Like, she's like... I could have if I if I if I named those podcasts, I could have just named that podcast Rhapsody because like yeah. everything circled back around to be about rap, and yeah. I, I I wanted it to be that way because when she um like when we was texting each other about like how we was gonna do it, you know um because she was saying that the way that you feel about you know Kid Cudi and Matt Miller, that's the way I feel about rap. So I was yeah. like, okay, so. I, I don't want to bring somebody on to where they're not comfortable. So I wanted, you know, that to be like really like the subject matter because like I don't want to bring somebody on. Like, like I don't want to like do a podcast and be like, like if you not never like interested in like watching, I don't know, like I can't bring you on for like a Florida State expert. Like you're not a Florida State expert. You know what I'm saying? You're an it Ohio State expert. I mean, you might you. I mean, you know. I mean, you know. You know some stuff, but, but you know what I'm saying. But it ain't. You know what I'm saying? It ain't. It ain't, it ain't yeah, it ain't like I know. You know, but yeah. like, yeah, yeah. But yeah, man. Um, uh, please go support hey, the all. Like, I, I, I meant to say that too. I ain't like how she brought up when uh, old dude from Michigan State blasted my boy like that either. <laughs> she could have kept that to herself, man. She kept that to herself. You know what I'm saying? We'll play that around here, man. Oh, we'll uh, that. that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, man. But that was that was dope, man. Y'all, please go out, go check out that episode, man. Like it was, you know, it was one of the, it was one of those good ones, man. Yeah. If it, 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 it turned out, it turned out to be really well. So you know, maybe maybe I try to do a little bit more of these 
some more of these interviews, man. You know, if I can find yeah. some people that, that's that's really into it, because you know, you know, maybe maybe I got a skill, maybe I don't. We'll see. You know what I'm saying? Because that was yeah, you, that was you that was one, that man. was a plan. You got one, man. Trust me. You you got to you got to harness it and, and sharpen it, but you got one, bro. Trust me. Trying, man. I'm trying. So please, please go support that, man. Like, rate, subscribe, all that good stuff. Yeah, for sure. So, you know what I'm saying? We up out of here, man. But you know what I'm saying? I got to support my Cleveland Browns because we had a great year. You know what I'm saying? It feels good. Um, you know what I'm saying? These are the caps that they had on the sideline. So I had to show out one good time. You know what I'm saying? Let everybody know. I'm doing it like that, man. But um, you already know, man, how they say in, in Hollywood, it's a wrap. Good.